Hello and welcome to The Wargamer and another Warhammer 40k tutorial. This hour I'll be showing you how to paint Khan the Betrayer using the Citadel range of paints to do so. Before painting this miniature we need to make sure that we assemble it and I've mostly assembled the miniature here. I've just kept the backpack separate in this case as it would make it easier to paint around these areas at the back. And I've also primed it using the Uniform Grey Spray Primer available from the Army Painter because the grey base coat will give us a really nice and rich red when painting the armour. The first step in painting this miniature is to paint all of the red panels on the armor. And we're starting off with a base coat of corn red, followed by a wash of non-oil before applying a layer of Evil Sun Scarlet and then finally a highlight of Wild Rider Red. So for the first step we'll be painting all of these inner red sections with the corn red and unless you're using a wet palette I would recommend mixing in just a small amount of water into this mix just to improve the flow making it a lot easier to paint these armor panel sections. Now you may need to apply two coats to get the best coverage possible. With the corn red base coat applied the next step is to wash over it with the normal oil and this will pull into all of these recesses really bringing out the details as you can see it's bringing it out on the skulls there we're going to get it across these panels and make sure it pulls into these recesses around the trims. Now you may want to mix in just a small amount of water into the mix as well just to improve the flow slightly. It'll just uh, water it down so it's not quite as strong as well. Make sure you apply it across all of these red areas and make sure that it pours into all the recesses. Now I'll be splitting the application of the Evil Sun Scarlet into two steps. First of all I've mixed in roughly one part Lamy Medium to one part Evil Sun Scarlet and I'm going to be applying a glaze over these larger flat surfaces trying to pick out the ray section. As you can see here, you imagine the light hitting, coming down vertically from the miniature. We want to simulate that like so. However, when we actually come to paint some of the other areas of the miniature, such as the areas around the chest here, we're just going to be highlighting the edges instead. As you can see here, just about very fine lines along the edges like so. After applying the Evil Sun Scarlet, the next step is to highlight with the Wild Rider Red. Now for the panels here, I'll just be very carefully painting a very thin line along the top of these panels there. And then we actually come to paint the other areas that we highlighted, such as around the chest. I'll just be very carefully picking out the corners, like so. The next step is to paint all the black areas, such as the spaces between the armor plates and also um, the actual weapon stock itself as well. I'm painting all of these areas first of all with the bad and black followed by a highlight of Eshin Grey before finally highlighting with Dawnstone. When applying the bad and black base coat you want to make sure that you cover these areas really nicely so I've just mixed in a small amount of water here and I'll be applying two coats so instead of just the one. This will give us a really nice and even coverage in which to build up from. After painting the base coat of a bad and black, the next step is to highlight all of these black areas using the ash and grey, and I'm just very carefully picking them out with my brush here. Just give us a, a nice beginning highlight and just helps the black areas to stand out a little bit more. The second highlight for the black areas is to apply Dawnstone, and I'll just be focusing this on the very tips instead of just along the edges as I did in the previous step. As you can see here, I'm just picking out these small horns that are emanating from the armour. The next step in painting the miniature is to paint all of the pipes. So this includes this one here and then also the one under the axe arm as well. And we're starting off with a base coat of Screamer Pink before highlighting with Pink Horror, before finally washing over the entirety of the pipe with Drucci Violet. Now when applying the first layer, we just want to make sure we get a really nice and even base coat. And to do this, I've mixed in a small amount of water into the mix and this will just improve the flow slightly. And I'll be applying two coats instead of the one and this will give us the best coverage possible. So with the pink horror, I'll just be applying a very fine line across the center of the pipe. Just like so, very carefully dragging the brush along. I'm also going to be picking out the edges of these sections here where you can see the line parts. Like so. And then continuing the line along the miniature. And I would recommend mixing just a small amount of water here just to improve the flow and make painting this line much easier. The final step in painting the pipes is to watch over these uh, ends here. You can just see I'm using the Drucci Violet just on the ends just to create some shading and also to differentiate almost like a bruise as it feeds into the weapon there. With the pipes completed the next step is to paint the tassels here and we're starting off with a base coat of Stegodon Scale Green followed by a highlight of Sotek Green before finishing off with a final highlight of a Temple Guard Blue. As we've done with the other base coats I've mixed in some water here just to improve the flow and this will give us the best a starting coat possible in which to build up from. Following the base coat we're now going to be applying a highlight of Sotek Green 
just picking out the raised sections of these tassels like so, just carefully dragging the brush along, adding in the highlight of the Sotec green, leaving the darker Stegodon scale green visible in the recesses. So to finish off the tassels, I'll just be applying the Temple Guard blue just to the very tips here, picking out the raised sections again, but just focusing more towards the end of the strands like so, just dragging my brush, getting a subtle highlight as we build up towards the end. The next area to paint is the bare arm that you can just about see here. And we're starting off with a base coat of Bugman's Glow, followed by a mixture of Cadian Flesh Stone and Lamia Medium before highlighting with Kislev Flesh. And then we're finishing off by a wash of Reikland Flesh Shade. Now to begin with, we just want to get a nice and even base coat over the skin areas. And so I've mixed in some water with the Bugman's Glow. And I want to apply a couple of coats. Getting two thin coats is always better than one, one thick coat as it gives the, the best coverage possible and not obscure any details. With the Bugwins Glow dried, the next step is to apply a 50-50 mix of Acadian Flesh Tone and Lamium Medium over the surface here. And this will create a nice glaze. It'll lighten the skin tone only subtly. And it'll give some really nice definition of colour between the dips and the troughs of the skin. Now that the Cadian Flesh Stone is dry, we're now going to be highlighting with the Kislev Flesh. I'm going to be picking out some of the harsher areas, such as these knuckles here, just very carefully picking them out, just adding a little bit more definition there, just to enhance the details. Same across the arms as well. Once you, if you're careful enough, you can just very, very gently just drag your brush along there and just create some definition on the muscles and also the veins as well. Following the highlight of Kisset Flesh, I'll now be washing over the skin areas with the Reikland Flesh Shade Wash. And this will create some real definition by pooling into these recesses here. You can just about see as it pools in there and really bring out the detailing in the skin. After painting the skin, the next step is to paint the vein that we've got coming out of the arm there. We're painting this with Fenrisian Grey. So I've mixed in a small amount of water with the Fenrisian Grey here. I'm just going to be very carefully picking out the vein here. Very lightly, we don't want it to be too strong, we just want to be enough of a difference to make this vein stand out across the skin and then just across the bicep there as well. The next step is to paint all of the skulls across the miniature. So we've got the ones on the chains here, we've got them on the knee pads, the, the waist there as well. We've got them uh, emanating from the back here. There are quite a few of them scattered about the miniature and we'll be base coating these first of all with Rakar Flesh before washing over them with Seraphim Sepia before finally highlighting with the Shabti Bone. Now I've mixed in just a small amount of water with my Rakar Flesh here, but if you're using a wet palette, you shouldn't need to. Now this gives me really nice coverage over the grey primer. Now I'm going to be applying two coats, allowing this coat to dry thoroughly before applying the second one. Following the base coat of Rakar Flesh, the next step is to wash over the skulls with Seraphim Sepia. And as you can see here, it will pull into all of these recesses, really bringing out the details. and gives this dark bone colour that we can build upon in the next highlight. With the wash dried, the next step is to highlight these bones and skull areas, and I'm going to be picking out the features, such as around the eyes here, just across the forehead as well, around the nose, and then also the teeth as well. We don't want to be subtle here, we just want to pick out some of these detailing just to really enhance the bone effect. The next task in painting Khan is to paint the wraps around the weapon here. You can also paint any pouches on the miniature this way as well. And we're starting off with a base coat of Rhinox Hide, followed by a highlight of Doom Ball Brown, before finally highlighting the very corners with Squig Orange. Using Rhinox Hide to paint these areas gives us a really nice leather effect, at least for the base colour anyway. You can see here we're just making sure we get into all these recesses and being very careful when we actually come to paint next to the skin. We don't want to overlap onto the skin and ruin our paint job over the fingers. Just be very, very careful as you do so. Again, just mix in a small amount of water with the Rhinox Hide as you're applying it, unless you're using a wet palette. After applying the Rhinox Hide, we're now going to be highlighting these wraps. We're using Doom Ball Brown. I just want to be very careful and just pick out the folds here with the Doom Ball Brown. Just got a small amount of my brush here. Again, just mix in just a small amount of water just to improve the flow slightly. I'm going to be very carefully picking out these folds. And this will really enhance the detail and really make these folds stand out. With the Doom Ball Brown completed, the next step is to apply a small highlight of Squig Orange, and we're going to be focusing this mainly on the top side of the axe, as you can see here. It's going to simulate light coming down vertically from above and then hitting the, the fabric there. We just want to do some very small dots just along the surface there as well. And also, if you've got uh, the pouch, such as we have just in there, you can see we're going to be picking out the corners 
of the pouch with the squig orange, like so. The next step in painting the miniature is to paint all of the brass areas, and there are quite a few of them on the miniature, so I'd recommend taking a look at the box art, just to double check which areas you want, but there's going to be all of these uh, trims around the armor there, we've got the, um, the edging around the axe as well. Lots of different areas, we'll be starting off with a base coat of Balthazar Gold, followed by a wash of Agrax Earthshade before finally highlighting with Sycorax Bronze. Now the Balthazar Gold is a base layer, which will mean painting over these uh, grey primer will be very easy. However, I would recommend just mixing in a small amount of water again, just to make uh, applying this base layer much easier. Now be very careful when applying this, as we don't want to over spill onto any of the other areas we've painted, such as the bone or red areas, as it can be quite tricky to paint over them once that's done. So I'm just being very careful around these areas here, making sure not to overspill. Following the application of the Balthazar Gold, the next step is to wash over the gold areas with the Agrax Shade Wash. You can see here I'm making sure that it pulls into all of these recesses here, really bringing out the details like so. We want to make sure we get it across the entirety of the Balthazar Gold, but try not to overspill onto the areas that we've already painted. With the wash dried, the next step is to apply the Sycorax Bronze Highlight over the top here. We're picking out the spikes like so, and then also dragging the brush along these edges just to enhance these detailings you can see here. Just create the effect of light reflecting off the surface and really enhance the brass colour that we've started here. With the brass areas completed, the next step is to start painting some of the bronze detailing that we have on the inside of the axe head here. And we're starting off with a base coat of Warplot Bronze, followed by a highlight of a Brass Scorpion, before applying uh, some Nihilac Oxide over the top. Now when painting the inside of the axe here, just be very careful not to overspill onto the trim that we've painted in the previous steps. Just use a thin brush and just be careful around the edges especially. And the colour isn't too dissimilar, that if you do overspill, it's not too difficult to either go over and correct it or just to wipe it off with some water. With the base coat applied, I'm just going to be picking out some of these skulls just on the surface here with the breast scorpion, just carefully dabbing my brush onto the tips there and just to really bring out the detail like so. The next step is to create some corrosion inside the detailing on the axe here. So I've got my Nihilac Oxide and I'm going to be targeting this around this section of the axe. You can just about see there, I'm just placing it inside, making sure that it pulls into the recesses. We ideally want it to still be visible on the surface. We have the bronze on the surface there and just the Nihilac Oxide pulling into the recesses. We don't want to do too much either. We don't want to overpower it, so I'm just going to do a few little spots just at the top and then down at the bottom here as well. Now the remaining areas to paint are the silver metallic areas, and you can see all of them here are still grey. And we're starting off with a base coat of lead belcher, followed by a wash of non oil before finally highlighting with Stormhose Silver. Now I'm painting these silver areas, just be careful not to overspill onto some of the non-metallic areas that we've painted in the previous steps, such as around the skin as I tackle these chains. Now you also want to be painting some of these inside pipe areas, you can just see one on the shoulder there, and there's also a couple down on the pipe at the side there as well. So if you tackle these areas, make sure you use a very thin brush and just a small amount of paint on the tip there, so that you don't overspill onto the areas we've already painted. With the silver base coat down, the next step is to apply a wash of normal oil, and this will pull into all of these recesses here and really bring out the detailing, especially on the chains here. I'm just dragging the brush along there, making sure it flows into all of these crevices and really enhances the detailing here. After the wash is dried, the next step is to highlight these metal areas. We're using Stormhose Silver. I'm just going to be picking out some of these sharp sections of the chain. That'll really enhance the detail. It'll give the effect that light is reflecting off the surfaces as well. We want to go over all the areas that we painted with in the previous steps. Just highlight them like so. Now the next step is to paint the glowing guys on the miniature. This includes the mask there, also the skull on the waist, and also the two skulls on the knee pads as well. We're starting off with a base coat of Moot Green, followed by a highlight of Gorse Blaster Green. Now when you come to paint the step, make sure you thoroughly clean out your water and your brushes. You don't want to get the metallic flakes from the previous steps mixed in. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just going to make sure I thoroughly paint inside the eye socket. If we do overspill, it's not a problem, because it just gives this nice green glowing effect. The next step in painting the eyes is to just pick out the actual eye itself with the gorse plaster green, just picking out a very small dot in the middle there. And this will just simulate a nice glowing effect with the light emanating from the center. With the eyes painted, the next step is to paint the glowing plasma pistol there. And we're starting off with a base coat of Temple Guard Blue, followed by a wash of a Dragon Half Nightshade, before finally highlighting with Baharoth Blue. So being careful not to overspill onto the areas we've already painted, I'm going to be painting the 
ridges just on the top of the plasma pistol, making sure that I get into the recesses with the Temple Guard blue. Following the base coat, we now want to apply the Drakenhof Nightshade over the surface there, and it'll pull into these recesses and really bring out these ridges and really bring out the detail there. Now the final step in painting the plasma pistol is to just very carefully pick out these ridges with Baharov blue. And this will just really complete the glowing effect. So you see here I'm just dragging the brush very gently across the surface like so. And here we have the finished Khan the Betrayer who you can see I've assembled and glued to a base. Now whilst this tutorial focused on Khan the Betrayer, you could use the exact same colours and techniques that I've used in this video to paint other Khan Berserkers or even the Blood Warriors from Age of Sigmar. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please do let me know in the comments below along with your suggestions for future tutorials. Additionally, if you'd like to be kept up to date with all of my future videos and to find out what projects I'm currently working on, you can do so by hitting the subscribe button or checking out my Facebook and Instagram pages which you can find links to in the description. And finally, if you'd like to support me in making more tutorials, you can do so by checking out my Patreon page which you can find a link to on screen now or in the description below. From there, you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which will just really help me in producing future tutorials. So until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.